And here we go. So welcome to the Accelerator Call. This is our September call. If I have not had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Mindy Stern, and I am the host of the Accelerators. And every month we bring events like this to you for free on Zoom. If this is the first time that you are, um, if this is the first time that you are at an accelerator call, if you could put the number one into the chat, that would be amazing so we can welcome you all. I'm looking for my chat. Here we go. Now, welcome to you all. We're so happy to have you here. If you have not, uh, if you are here and you would like people to know that you're here, I encourage every single one of you to put your LinkedIn URL and the type of role you're looking for into the chat because you never know who is going to see you here and who might want to offer you another opportunity. So definitely make yourself known and put your information into the chat. That would be amazing. Just to give you a little background about the link about the accelerators, we started this group in 2020, um, just as the pandemic was rearing its ugly head um, to give job seekers a sense of community. We started with a very small group of six, and I'm proud to have helped so many people um, with LinkedIn profile makeovers, with interview prep and resume reviews, and all great things to help people find their next career. Uh, we are now well over 600, and you are more than welcome to join us in our uh, group. It's a private LinkedIn group, um, but Lori will put the link into the chat so that you can join us and I'm um, happy to have you there. Uh, we are very, very welcoming group. Uh, if you are not yet connected with me, feel free to connect with me because you will see lots of good information coming through my, my, my feed. And um, I want you all to have all that experience whenever you need it. Next month, mark your calendars. We are in, we have invited Jillian Whitney, who's going to come speak to us about fast tracking your job search with video. Now, video is not something I am particularly comfortable with right now, but I know that it is definitely can be a great um, differentiator. So I am happy to host it. It's next month on October 9th. And Lori will put the, um, the, the uh, link into the chat. Registration is open for it now. So you're welcome to join there. Um, what else? During our call, we um, will definitely get some great, great nuggets. And we will, nuggets are anything that speaks to you, things that you are interested in learning about. And so we want to make sure that everyone knows about these great things. And what I will do is I will take those nuggets and I will create a post with them. And that way people who aren't able to join us today will be able to um, hear us and get to learn from Liam, even if they're not on the call today. Before I introduce Liam, I wanna share two amazing giveaways today. The first one is um, I was talking to a couple of my clients um, this past week and actually the last couple of weeks. And we always talk about the strategy of engaging on LinkedIn and how do we do that? I'm sure we'll talk more about that today with Liam. Um, and I always hear, I don't know what to post. And so I put together a 10 types of post um, cheat sheet for you guys. And Lori's gonna put that into the, into the um, chat now so that we can uh, you know, just ha have some inspiration to figure out different ways to uh, talk to people and different things that you can use to post. The second uh, giveaway today is Liam uh, has a ebook that he wants to, uh, to give out today. It's called The Brand Stand Blueprint, A Refreshing Guide to LinkedIn Brand Excellence. Um, and we're gonna have that link for you as well. So um, I first met Liam when he was doing a LinkedIn Live with Brenda Miller. I don't, he, I don't know if he knows that. Give me one second. My pup wants to leave the room. Thanks. 
sorry about that. Uh, so I first met Liam on a LinkedIn Live with Brendan Miller, and um, I loved his take on personal branding, and I immediately approached him to speak to the group. Um, our exchange is a great example of the power of LinkedIn and the importance of actively looking to expand your network. Now, Liam and I, we frequently support each other on LinkedIn, um, and with a background in tech startups, he now spends his time helping people find their unique voice on LinkedIn. This is a fantastic opportunity um, to ask your questions directly to a branding expert. So I'm gonna ask you if you could um, just like to see you raise your hand. There's a raise hand option. Uh, mine, where is mine? Ah, here's mine. Mine is in the more section, but I'd like you to just test it, make sure you can do it because if you wanna ask a question, there you go, I see the hands. You rise to the top. When you hit your raise hand, you raise to the top. So I will see you and we'll call on you to, to ask your questions from Liam. You do have to manually lower your hand if you don't want to ask a question or after you're done with your question. So I'm going to lower my hand now. Excellent. Good job, everyone. Excellent. Um, and I'm going to start the ball rolling because I had some folks who will... Um, who were not able to join us today, but they sent me some questions. So Liam, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Welcome, everyone. Tell us a little bit about who you are, and then I'll start with questions, and we'll see how many other people would like to um, who would like to ask you their questions. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. First and foremost, I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with folks about my favorite topic, which is LinkedIn personal branding. Um, I have a sort of interesting background. I, I spent the first 20 years of my career um, in technology startups, primarily working in operations, sales operations, revenue operations. Um, I was sort of a startup Swiss army knife. Um, I'd get hired, thrown to a problem, I'd fix the problem, I'd move on to something else, uh, which suited me fine because uh, I, I've got a very curious mind and I love to do all sorts of different things. Um, and in 2019, I found myself spending a lot of time on LinkedIn uh, consuming content. And I decided when my daughter was born in November of 2019, during paternity uh, leave, I was going to start trying to create content on the platform. And like many people, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know where to start. I was very nervous. I was uh, self-conscious about what my colleagues and my peers would think about me starting to create content on LinkedIn. Uh, I had the inner dialogue that I hear from so many people on a regular basis, which is, well, what I have to say, who cares what I have to say? It's not valuable enough, et cetera. Um, and I just did it. I just jumped in. Um, and um, in that time, I just started talking about things that fascinated me in business. I was here for community. I wasn't here for, you know, job purposes or for um, monetary purposes. And and um, and then one day I got a job interview from a company um, to, to be their head of revenue operations. And the chief marketing officer said to me, I think you could do this job. I definitely want to have you on the team, but I have a different job that I think might be more interesting for you. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. And he said, I don't have a job description, but I think you're the guy that can help me write it. And I said, all right, go on. And he said, I'm trying to build an employer branding and talent marketing team. Um, our company wants to get acquired. We need to hire dozens of engineers and product people to do that. And I think your sales operations background with your brand marketing experience would probably make you a perfect candidate for that. And I said, well, I'm flattered by that, but I don't have any brand marketing experience. I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, sure you do. He said, I've been following you on LinkedIn for six months, and I just want you to do what you're doing there for our company. And that's when the light bulb went off for me that LinkedIn really is this incredibly powerful platform. Um, and you'll you'll hear me say, and one of the reasons that part of the, the title of this session is Manifesting Serendipity is because uh, I have tr truly found that to be the case on LinkedIn. Um, the more authentic I was, the more I put myself out there, the more I would attract people into my life who wanted to give me opportunities to succeed. And I think that really is at the very root of it, what makes LinkedIn such a special community and such a special platform. And so um, fast forward two years, I took the job, we got acquired. Um, I made enough money that I could start my own business. 
And I decided to just go all in on um, my own LinkedIn brand consultancy. And that was a year ago in August, uh, August 7th of 2023. And I've worked with 65 clients and since then. And um, I'm having a blast uh, for the first time in my life. I'm really doing what I'm most passionate about. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I'm really looking forward to talking to you about that because this is really fun for me. Excellent. And fun for me. I, I look at LinkedIn like a big party. You yep. know what I mean? So in this party, we walk in the door and we know some people and we know them, we like them, we trust them. And there's so many people out there that we don't know yet. Right. Yep. So it's so exciting to get to know new people. And I have met so many people just even from commenting, commenting yep. on people's posts you really start getting a sense of who these people are and who you're going to resonate with and, and maybe, you know, really get to know better. And I've built very strong relationships with lots of folks just from LinkedIn. So I'm going to uh, start asking some questions, but absolutely, I just want to remind you, if you'd like to ask Liam a question, just raise your hand and we'll call on you. Um, the first question that I, I received was, how can a job seeker um, really identify their brand and differentiate themselves on LinkedIn. It's a really crowded market right now. So what can a job seeker do specifically to help themselves uh, to stand out? So I think, you know, one of the things that separates every job seeker and every individual from other people is personality. And I think there are a lot of people who are very nervous about showing their personality on the LinkedIn platform for reasons that I mentioned earlier worried about the judgment of other people, worried about what colleagues will think, what future bosses might think, et cetera. Um, and I think that one of the major changes and shifts that I think people need to embrace is that when you're building a personal brand on LinkedIn, the purpose of a brand is to attract the right audience and detract the wrong audience. Mm -hmm. And so the more you can be yourself on the platform, the more you can talk about the things you know, the things you find fascinating, the articles that you're reading on a regular basis, your own lived experience in your profession, um, th the more likely you are to attract people who find that interesting. And yes, there will be people who don't find it interesting and they might keep scrolling and you know there might be people that even have opportunities that um, would be would scroll past. But to me, I don't view that as a loss. I view that as a benefit because if I see somebody, if somebody sees my content on LinkedIn and they say, eh, he's not my cup of tea. I don't really love what he's putting out there. Then they've probably done us both a favor and spared us three to five hours of interviewing and all this sort of back and forth. And I really want to put myself out there so that people who find my personality and the things that I have to say valuable will show up support me, I can then in turn go and support them as well and really build a strong community around my skills, my knowledge, and my personality. And I think a lot of job seekers are very worried about putting themselves out there too much because they fear the negative things that can happen. But if you flip it on its head and you start thinking about all the positive things that could happen, um, then you start to change your perspective a little bit. And I think too many people underestimate how much value they have to deliver through sharing their lived experience. Um, if you network strategically on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is a gigantic CRM. It's got all your leads and your prospects built into it, whether you're in business for business or you're here to find a job, um, you can see where people are and where they work and what they do. And you can find things about their personality and their background and their experience that make it easy for you to reach out to them and build a connection. And there's nothing like somebody at a company taking your resume and sending it to the recruiting team, right? That referral is a powerful thing. It almost guarantees you, it guarantees you a review of your resume and it guarantees you probably a call because referrals are taken so highly by the recruiting teams. And so um, that ultimately is what I think is the, the best way to go about it is to find companies that you want to work at. Find the people who work at those companies, introduce yourself to those people, have a bunch of content that they can look at so that they know who you are and how you think, and then increase the likelihood that somebody would be willing to network you into the door at that company. It's hmm. a long-winded answer. 
<laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a great answer. And I think that is, it's so important. I've seen it happen so often where, um, you know, a client will be talking to me and saying, I just can't get any traction. And I say, let's look at some of these jobs that you're looking at. Do you know anyone in these companies? Oh, yeah, I know this one. I know that one. Okay, so let's start having that interpersonal connection, right? That relationship building. That's what LinkedIn's all about. And it's and it's not only about building relationships, but people are so generous, I have found on LinkedIn. I mean, really generous. And when you reach out, people are happy to help if they can, right? Yep. So absolutely, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, so going along with that theme, when we're creating posts and let's say a job seeker is looking for multiple different types of jobs, they're not only focused on one type of job, they may be open to three or four different types. How do we create a post that um, is authentic, you know, talking about our personality, but also is going to kind of resonate with the network that we want to be seen in? How do, how do, how do we go about doing that? Uh, the shortest answer that I have for you is to just do it, right? Just say what you want to say. And so if if you're interested in potentially pursuing two or three different types of jobs, maybe you dedicate one post every week to different types of jobs that are in that field and why you're a good fit for it. Um, or sharing relevant experience that you have that ties into a specific function. Um, I think, you know, I was coaching somebody recently and this was a the C-level executive who was really nervous about putting herself out there and, and sort of activating her network. And I was saying, you know, listen, th this is... This is your network. They want to support you. They care about you. They want to to stand you up when you need a, a hand. And um, she ended up posting about her desire to find a new role. And she was saying, you know, I'm, I'm looking for either a full time role at an executive level or fractional work. And she was really torn between talking about both in the same post. And I said, look, this is your reality. If you share your reality and you do it in a way that is really authentic it's going to resonate with people. And she ended up getting 30,000 impressions on the post and hundreds of engagements and a couple of leads for opportunities that that really appreciated her vulnerability and her willingness to just put it out there. And I think that is is really the biggest thing is that people tend to get very nervous about using an open to work banner or um, saying, I'm on the job market, I'm looking for something. Uh, and the truth is that if that's your truth, you should share it and and people will respond positively to it more often than not. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head, Mindy, when you said that LinkedIn is a generosity platform. I've heard many different people use the term generosity uh, to describe the LinkedIn community. And I would totally agree with that. Um, uh, more often than not, people are here because they want to lift other people up. They're not trying to take people down. And that's what makes LinkedIn one of the more unique places on uh, on the internet, uh, there's a lot of other social platforms where nastiness and and heckling happen, and LinkedIn doesn't really have a ton of that by and large. Yeah, I personally have not seen that, and I have yep. only seen generosity. But yep. I will tell you that I have seen um, people who are using LinkedIn as a place to kind of vent their emotions about hard things that are happening in their lives. And I think there is um, a fine line. And I, I, I hesitate to recommend people using desperation as a way for people <laughs> to be hired, right? Yep. Most hiring managers are not looking for desperate folks. They're looking for people who can add value to their organizations. And there's been a lot of conversation recently about skills and how important skills are on, you know, for, for job seekers, uh, even more important, more so than even perhaps degrees, but skills and um, knowledge. We we are um, entering a very difficult time when there's a really town gap for certain skills that are out there. A lot of them are technical skills that we just don't have enough of. So, um, you know, I encourage everyone to stay positive um, and find ways to say things in a positive manner that are not trying to bring other people down. Yep, 100%. And then I think the other thing to think about is is think about your career through a storyteller's narrative. Um, 
there are, I mean, if you think about a resume, right? It's a one to two page document, maybe three, if you've got three decades of experience, but by and large, it's a relatively short document, bullets, quantifiable data. Um, it talks about what you've done, where you've done it and when you've done it, which is great. There's a need for that, but you're a lot more than your resume, right? Like there is so much more to you than the resume, your personality, the way you think, the way you communicate. Those are things that people will never get a chance to see unless you're at the interview table. But what about this platform that lets you show that on a daily basis so that when the people who are considering inviting you to the interview table are looking through your LinkedIn profile, they're impressed with what they see. They like the context that you've provided. And context is really a very important part of LinkedIn. In my experience, your resume talks about what you've done, where you've done it, and when. LinkedIn is a fantastic place for you to complement that by talking about who you are, how you do what you do, why you do what you do, mm -hmm. right? Share your passion, tell your story, um, talk about experiences that you've had in your career and why they resonated with you and, you know, the things that you've learned and um, positive things. You can talk about more challenging environments that you've worked in where you have to talk about what the problem was and how you solved it, et cetera. But LinkedIn gives you this tremendous platform to share context behind what you've done as a professional. And so few people do it. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity that presents itself when you give people a story, tell them, you know, what your story is, what's your narrative. And I think that's part of the challenge, right? Having people really understand and what is, what is important to get out there. Um, and I think that's part of the whole branding concept how do we figure out who we are and what is that what is that narrative right how do we create that so that we are kind of consistent and we also are speaking about who we are and what value we can provide and i think that i think that might be part of the challenge for most people to figure out you know what have i done lately like when i ask the question tell me about yourself right or you know we're practicing interview prep and we talk about that question such a hard question to answer because we are such you know, we are very complex human beings, right? All of us have so many different things going on in our lives and, and figuring out what is most relevant to talk to the interviewer about is part of this also, you know, who are we? Yep, 100%. Yeah. So have you seen any mistakes that uh, job seekers might make when they are when they are out there and things that people should stay away from? I mean, I think, remember, it's a professional platform. I think there's a there's a narrowing divide between personal and professional now. I think the, the pandemic really sort of brought professional and personal more into focus together. And so remember that what you say on the platform is open and visible to anybody. Mm -hmm. So put your best foot forward. Um, when given an opportunity to you know, if you see content that re relates to you about a topic that you're passionate about, leave leave your thoughts, but do it in a way that is akin to how you would conduct yourself in a professional setting. Um, I think sometimes people forget and they they maybe let their passion run away with them a little bit. And you know, you just have to remember that everybody can see what you do. Every single action you take on LinkedIn is a micro ad for your personal brand. Every action. It's one of the only platforms online where what you do on the platform gets broadcast to your network. So um, be, be mindful of that and and make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and being thoughtful with your approach. Um, I'll touch on what you said earlier, Mindy. You know, keep it positive, right? Nobody wants to see somebody that's just constantly posting about negativity and constantly post. You know, you don't want to be perceived as somebody who is is the victim or you know you've got. Uh, a lot of negativity, even if that is the reality that you're experiencing, try to be as uplifting as you can and as optimistic as you can and and really de dig deep into your own belief in your skills and in your experience and tell the positive element of those things when you're putting them out there on the platform. I think that's really, really important. <clears throat> okay, we have a question that came in. Gregory, I don't know if you want to... Um... Raise your hand, but I can read it if you like. 
Um, is there a sweet spot of number of posts per week or per month to maximize your visibility in LinkedIn? Recruiter, uh, Gregory is coming up. Um, or is there a penalty for not posting frequently? Um, I think there's no silver bullet here. You know, I think the 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 I the, the the answer that I always give people is that you should be posting as frequently as you can do so to consistently maintain to maintain consistency over time. So and and what I mean by consistency is not every day. I mean no. thinking thinking about what you have to say. It's important to basically say okay it, can i can i maintain posting twice a week for six months <laughs> she has not know where awesome. to go <laughs> and, uh, so we need to, uh can everyone please mute themselves unless you're speaking There's um, unmuted okay Good, so 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 you know if you can post five times a week for six months straight do it if you can post three times a week do that um what's really most important in my opinion is commenting uh, to people who are not accustomed to posting con consistently, like you can post twice a week, but then spend those three days in between the two post days, really investing in finding people who are posting about topics that you, that you care about, that matter to you, that are a reflection of your skill set, and then spend time commenting on those posts thoughtfully. Um, because again, every action you take is a micro ad. Your posts on LinkedIn will only go so far. Depends on your network. Depends on how active your network is. Depends on how engaged your network is. If you're getting, you know, five or six comments on every post that you put out, and your network's maybe a thousand to three thousand people, there's only so far that's going to go. But if you spend time commenting on the content that other people are putting out there with more traction on their posts, then you're going to get more people looking at your profile. And so those two things in concert and in parallel are what I recommend. Absolutely. Greg, did that answer your question? It did. Hopefully my mic's working. My headset died. Yes. Yes. Good. No, your mic is working. Great. Your Thanks. Working Thank you mind. very much. Lee. Of course. Um, Liam, I'm going to follow up on that because for people who are hesitant to begin commenting, mm -hmm. right, and they're using the little like buttons and the, the, the emotions and things, um, I think they're missing out on a huge opportunity. Absolutely. 100%. And it's like, um, I read a post this morning, I forgot who said it, but um, it's like if you were in a party and everyone you walked around to, you went thumbs up to, <laughs> it would look a little weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Never so, heard it said that way, but that's a really good point. Yeah. So if you are at this LinkedIn party, and as long as you're here and you want to be visible, you might as well make a comment. And um, I have heard, and I don't know, we have some um, some very small LinkedIn folks here. I see Al Smith is here and, and Kenneth Lang are both here. Um, I, last I heard it was you need eight words or more in a comment. Is that still accurate or did it did that number rise? I don't, I'm not sure. But the last I heard it was eight words or more in a comment for like, wow, is not sufficient for a comment. It's got to be. Uh yeah, I mean, I, I think it's probably, I don't know if there's an actual material number, but I think LinkedIn's looking for something that's probably closer to like 15 words, um, something thoughtful, you know, something that gives your perspective as well as acknowledging that you like something. So love this. Here's why, right? Uh, don't just leave it at love this because it just, I mean, that's fine. It's better than nothing. But what LinkedIn wants to see is conversation. Um, they want to see back and forth within the comments. They want to see people having a dialogue. Um, LinkedIn has a join the conversation slogan that they first launched. I think in 2017 was the first time I saw it. And I was confused because I was like, I don't see any conversation on LinkedIn. It's all just people posting press releases and talking about, you know, the new jobs that they've gotten. But it's clear to me that that's what LinkedIn is looking for. And if, 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 you know, I'm somebody who spends an inordinate amount of time on LinkedIn and I've noticed in the last year or two, LinkedIn has really gotten good at identifying who some of your closest contacts are on the network and then making sure that you're seeing where they're spending time. So you're getting notifications from LinkedIn that says so-and-so is leaving a comment over here. And then you go over there and you start joining the conversation on that post. And I've noticed that happening increasingly over the last year. Um, so I think LinkedIn is really investing a lot in 
the folks who are spending time on the platform commenting. I agree. And I think it's that dialogue that's important. And another good way to get dialogue going is in the comment to ask another question, like a follow-up question. Yep. So if the people who are posting are keeping an eye, which we should be doing, I, I try when I post, I try to make sure that I'm around so I can respond to, to questions or uh, you know comments. Um, posting a question in the comments sometimes can start a nice dialogue as well, like a follow-up. Excellent. All right. I see um, Gregory Liverpool has, uh, has raised his hand. Greg, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, ask a question? Hmm. Maybe he has dropped off. I'm not sure. Sorry about that. Here. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I do. Sorry. Yes. I was on mute. Sorry. That's okay. Again. Pandemic, pandemic uh, problems come, run amok come here. So uh, this is uh, for people who are uh, PWD in terms of people with disability on the platform in terms of their voice and, and in terms of their engagement, how to stand out. Uh, mainly more uh, people who are neurodivergent. How do you, how Greg, can- I can't. How can a person with a neuro, who has neurodivergent can stand, can virtually stand out per se on on this on this platform basically? Um, I mean, I th I think I don't think my advice changes necessarily. Um, okay. You know, I think I think again, neurodivergent or not, your personality is your personality, and your lived experience is your lived experience, and the work that you've done and the things that you're passionate about and skilled at remain true. And so if you find a way to incorporate the strengths that you've built up and the experiences that you've had into a narrative, um, that's, you know, a true and accurate reflection of what you've done, uh, then I think that's still my biggest piece of advice. Um, and I think the other thing is, you know, there, there is a lot more, understanding around neurodivergent people. Uh, I, I myself have ADHD and I five or 10 years ago would probably never have ever dreamed of acknowledging that on a platform like LinkedIn for fear that it would be detrimental to my career and the opportunities that it would afford. And I think uh, we've come a long way in five years. I think a lot of people now uh, you know, have acknowledged the fact that while yes, there are certainly things that it, that become harder to do, like focus, <laughs> uh, when you have ADHD, like I do, uh, there's also a hyper-focus component and there's also a way to lean into that as a strength, right? Um, you know, there's a number of ways that you can find narratives that, um, positively reflect what you're doing. And so, uh, I, I don't think I would change my advice for, for, for that. Excellent. There was a question that my, thank you. The chat, the You're chat, welcome. thank you, Greg. Um, the chat's going fast. So there was a question though, someone asked about uh, premium and your thoughts about premium. I'll let you answer first, Liam, and then I'll give you my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I think that LinkedIn is an investment. Um, I view the premium version of LinkedIn as a worthwhile investment. Um, it gives you the ability to create custom personalized invitations to connect with people. You only get five a month if you're not paying for premium. It also gives you the ability to see all sorts of stats and data about the companies that you're potentially considering applying to, like their growth numbers, like if they've had a reduction in force in the last two years. You can see that in the premium section. You'll see their growth over time. And if you see a significant drop, it means they probably had layoffs recently. And so those are things that you want to pay attention to, right? For me personally, I would try and apply to companies that are constantly going up. Um, but the flip side could be said that if they're hiring on, 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 on the, on the heels of a layoff or a reduction in force, then they might not have another one really soon. So there's potentially some more security in those companies. Um, you know, you can debate that le left and right all you want, but the, the, the fact is that I think you LinkedIn will give you a lot more information, um, and a lot more capability with LinkedIn Premium 
than they will if you're using just the free version. I personally use LinkedIn Sales Navigator, have used it for years because it gives me the ability to have total control over who I'm seeing and where. So I create micro feeds for different personas um, that I work with within LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And then from there, I will basically run the commenting because I can then see co content that they're posting without any algorithmic interference. So uh, I am pro LinkedIn premium um, and have had it myself for probably three or four years. Okay, so uh, thank you, Liam. Um, I will tell you that you can probably get LinkedIn premium for free for about 30 days. They yep. constantly send out requests and I see it on all my clients up on their profiles. You know, do you want to try uh, LinkedIn premium? You can try it for 30 days. I would definitely ask you to try it when you're actively looking, see if it works for you. You can, you do get a lot of um, value. Uh, the statistics are good. The um, And I'm noticing that a lot more AI capabilities are being offered to people with uh, with um, the LinkedIn premium. So try it. Try it for 30 days. See if you like it. If you don't, you don't need to pay anything for it. But that's kind of my opinion. Julie Bruton's been very patient waiting. Julie, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Um, thank Great. you so much. Um, I have two questions. One is not from myself. Uh, Eileen Werner posted it in the chat. Is there an advantage of uh, an article over a post on LinkedIn? Um, so articles are longer form content that you can write on the platform. Uh, if you're a long form writer, then you, that, that could be a, a good way for you to get your thoughts down in longer form. And then you can take some of those themes within the longer post and turn them into small, into shorter posts. Um, I ah. think that people's attention spans are shorter now than they ever have been. And so articles are if you think about an article, the way it presents itself, it might show up in the feed when the person who wrote it posted about it, but then you're redirected to a different page to see it. And then you have to commit to reading it, which is generally a time commitment. <laughs> and a lot of people aren't going to do that. So I think you'll probably see drop off. So my, my bias is towards creating posts that are in the feed that people can consume within the feed. I encourage people to use images because our eyes are naturally trained to react to images more than we are just words alone. So images, in a sense, stop the scroll. They make the reader think, oh, I'm going to check out what this post is about. Then they read your your intro line or your hook. And if that's good and strong, which it should be, then they're going to click see more. And then they're going to see your post. And then they're going to hopefully see a call to action or a call to engage. And uh, you can start a conversation that way. So my bias is towards creating posts over articles. Okay. And also, what's, what do you think is the best way to get the attention of recruiters? I mean, I think connecting with them first and foremost um, is the easiest way. Um, commenting on their content is another way. Um, you could do it in reverse. You could comment on their content for a few weeks, or you could you know, spend some time engaging with their content and then send them a connection request. Um, uh, somebody who's familiar to them is going to be more likely to get uh, accepted than somebody who's not. So that's the reason that you would engage with content first and then send a connection request. Um, I think those are the two primary, those are the two primary ways I would do it. Uh, recruiters want talent, right? So, you know, if you're reaching out and, uh, you have a good profile and you've put out content that, that is of interest, uh, I think you'll have a pretty high success, high hit rate. What if you, what if you posted a video about yourself? Yeah. You could do that too. Um, but I think that it depends on how many people are recruiters in your network, right? So if you have a thousand connections, it's rumored that only 25% of people come to LinkedIn on a monthly basis to begin with. So if you have a thousand followers, a thousand connections, you're automatically talking to an audience of probably 250. Uh, and then the people that are part of that 250 have to basically show up on the day that you post, right? And so if, if, you don't have a majority of that network being recruiters already, then the recruiters might not see the video. Um, one thing that I am very bullish on is video in the DMs. So, and, and voice notes in the DMs because there's just an authenticity that comes across that way. Um, I mean, the way that I connected with Ryan Roslansky, who's the CEO of LinkedIn, was by sending him a Loom video 
introducing myself and talking about how much I love LinkedIn and asking him if he would connect with me. And he sent me a connection request. So, you know, you can, you can accomplish a lot with a 30 second loom interview, uh, or a, a video in the DMS that introduces yourself to people. <clears throat> Awesome. Excellent. Lily, I'm going to just add to what Liam said, because in October, uh, Jillian Whitney, who's she has a company called Video Easy Peasy, um, is going to talk about video for job seekers. And she's talking about Loom as well. So if you're interested in learning about video and how to use video to differentiate yourself, join us in October. I think it's October 9th. It happens to be on a Wednesday next month instead of Tuesday for Jillian's schedule. But um, definitely sign up for that. And uh, video is something we should all know about. Okay, awesome. Are you going to post that on your on your website, Wendy? It's already up. You can register. Oh, okay. Okay. And the link right. is in the chat somewhere. If Lori's still here, uh, she just posted it again in the chat. Okay. It's all right. Great. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. All right. We have Great David questions. Mills waiting patiently. I get myself unmuted there. Yes. Thanks very much. I just wanted to go back to commenting, and I'm not sure I heard this right, so I want to be sure. Uh, did I hear you say that commenting on posts is, or oh, commenting is more important than original posts? And secondly, uh, how many legitimate uh, posts should I be commenting on on any given day? In other words, I don't mean one or two words, but the real 10 to 12 words. How much commenting should I be doing? And are there as much more as you can, As much as you can. <laughs> um, is so is it more important no to comment than to post? Um, I, I mean, I would say you should be posting things, but you can get more traction for your personal brand through commenting, mm -hmm. okay. at least in the, in the beginning, right? Because in the right. beginning you're posting to your network, you're posting within a vacuum sort of, so to speak. Yeah. Um, these are people that know you already. They're already familiar with the experience that you've got. Mm -hmm. How are you going to break through that? How are you going to find the other people that are outside of your existing network who might have opportunities that you don't have already in your network? Right. Yeah. And that's where commenting comes into play because oh. you can use LinkedIn search and you can find posts that are being put on LinkedIn by people who work at specific companies. So say you want to work at a specific company, you can yeah. find posts from people within that company on LinkedIn and just start <laughs> commenting through those posts. Okay. Then the people at that company are going to see the comments that you're putting out there. And it doesn't mean that they're just going to randomly offer you a job within the comments. But if you spend a week, commenting on if you spend time each week commenting on posts from a specific company that you want to work at you start to breed familiarity with the people that are within that network of people and yeah. that creates more opportunity potentially than not doing that at all right so and i think a, a lot of people underestimate the reach or they, they they try and invest so much time in the content that they're posting through their profile and i'm not saying that's not a worthwhile expenditure of energy it is but to make the most of your time on LinkedIn, you have to have a strategy that includes both things. The so one that I, educates your existing network and the one that gets you out of that network and into a new opportunity network. Which is to say, if I make an original post, it only goes to my actual people I'm connected with. Or if that, I comment on that posts, and then, I get outside of that network. Correct. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yep. And David, I'll, I will add one thing to that. Yeah. When uh, the statistics are out there that most jobs are found through referrals, right? We know that, right? Yeah, I keep hearing that. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, those referrals are generally your second level connections, not generally your first level connections. For example, mm -hmm. what Liam said, because your pool of people you know, let's say you know a thousand people, but mm -hmm. if you go to your second level, that's a thousand times a thousand, whatever that number is, right? The pool okay. is much, much larger for your second levels. Mm hmm so keep that in mind as you, you want to get right. out there and get your name so out. So I should be doing both, but if I have the option, I should com comment more than I comment post. Comment more. Yes. A good rule of thumb is whatever you're doing, comment more. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you good very much. <laughs> yes. Good one. Uh, I We have time for one more, and, and Stephanie Lyon is the winner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So a quick question, because I've seen um, some of you posting and you'll tag your, you know, what do you think, Mindy? And they'll tag you. Is this a good potential, you know, strategy to to bring in people, but also make it look more active? 
Okay, so great question. I don't know what happened to my spotlight, but um, great question. I appreciate it. Um, I use tagging very cautiously. Okay, you don't want a wall of tags just to get eyes on your post. But I know, I know, for example, when I post about a particular topic, I know the people who will resonate with that particular topic. Today, I, I um, posted an article that Sherm had uh, put out. It was an alert about about the job postings, for, not job job openings for this past month. And I tag people in my network who I know who are HR type of folks, right? So I know they'd be interested in that. So that's how I like to think of it again as a dialogue. If I'm at this LinkedIn party and I'm talking to another person about some topic and I see someone walking by and they're also going to be interested in that topic, I'll bring them over. Come on in. So I never mind. I love it when people tag me. I always try and respond appropriately and very quickly if I can, as soon as I see it. Um, other people don't really like tags. So you need to know you need to know the folks that you're you're tagging. Thank Liam, you. I don't think Liam uses a lot of tags, but his network is humongous. And so it doesn't matter. I don't well, know. I would, I, it does matter, I would say. I, I think it, but but to emphasize your point, tag people that you know will be interested in what you're what you're tagging them on and you feel confident they would show up because if 50% of the people you tag don't react or engage with your content linkedin will assume you're spamming and it can decrease the reach of your post mm -hmm. so it's very important to be mindful about who you tag my general rule of thumb is i treat tags like inviting somebody into my house for a conversation and I'm not going to do that just to random strangers because they have 75,000 followers and tons of engagement. I'm going to do that to people who I know, who I've spoken to, most likely at least in the DMs, but most likely through Zoom or text messages or you know other other back and forth on a regular basis. Um, and I feel confident that those people are going to sh to know who I am when I tag them, and they're going to want to show up. And they're assuming that if I'm tagging them, it's because I know they'd be interested in what I'm talking about. Uh, not because I'm trying to get boosts. I see people all the time that are like dropping a comment on their post and they tag like 50 people and it just reeks of desperation in my opinion. So uh, I typically don't respond when I see that. Even if I am tagged, um, it's it's nice to, to be tagged in something, but not if you're just being tagged because somebody wants to boost their own engagement, right? And uh, you can start to determine who those people are pretty quickly once you start to spend a lot of time on the platform. So so that would be my recommendation is just making sure that you're confident that that person will show up uh, and find what you what you are tagging them on valuable. I agree. Thank you, Liam. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate it. Excellent. Okay, we're getting close to the hour, uh, and we do not have any more questions in the in the chat. So it's perfect timing. Um, can we highlight? Liam again. Liam, there we go. So Liam, I want to thank you so much for spending this hour with us. It's so enlightening and so inspiring to know that the work that we do on LinkedIn can really have a ripple effect. And I think that's something that we all need to keep in mind that whatever you post on that um, on that platform on LinkedIn, which is such a fabulous platform and I, I love it. I know Liam loves it. And lots of us on here understand the power of LinkedIn. Um, just remember that it is uh, like a mini resume of yours out there. And you're creating your brand every single day, whether you realize it or not. Whatever you're posting is adding to your to your brand. Who 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 is Mindy? Who is Liam? Who is Al? You know, that that that's what you're letting the world know. So again, right. thank you so much, Liam. Appreciate your time so much. Uh, any Thank you for having me. For the team, for the group here. Sorry, say that again. Any final words for the group? No, I, I, I just thank you for listening and thank you for your time and attention. If uh, if I can ever help you, you know where to find me. I'm on LinkedIn uh, pretty much all the time. Um, and uh, I would just say, if you have those doubts in your mind about the validity of what you're saying and the you know the the care that people will give. Try and, and try and turn those thoughts around. Try not to think about, well, what if somebody doesn't like it? Think about what if somebody does love it and that turns into opportunity because um, my experience is that there's 
just so much opportunity on the platform. You just have to show up and share your voice and share your experience and it will find you. Um, and I think that LinkedIn is really becoming a place where professionals can sort of leave their legacy a little bit. And uh, if you look at it that way, you start to be a little less intimidated by it. Um, you know, I think about LinkedIn and I think about my kids who are five and seven now, you know, they're going to look back 10 years from now or 15 or 20 years from now when they're in college and they don't want anything to do with me. <laughs> but they might see like, oh, this was how my dad built a business. And that feels kind of cool. And so I think, you know, if you think about it that way through the lens of legacy, and I also tell people, treat it like a journal that you would share with family, friends, and colleagues, right? You're just sharing your thoughts. You're not going too far into the personal or the political or anything that's inflammatory, but but you are being yourself. You are putting yourself out there. Um, trust that people will find you and, and will want to support what you're, what you're saying. Appreciate you, Leanne. Thank you so much. You got Thank it. you all for being here today. It's going to be a beautiful day. Go out there and make it a great one. Take care, everybody. Very nice to meet you all. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Bye.